Now we need to begin to solder our circuit together. In front of me you can see most of the things that we'll require. So we have a circuit board, a range of electronic components, a spool of solder. Solder is effectively the glue that conducts electricity which will hold all of your components onto the circuit board. We have a bulldog clip mounted onto a board that's going to act as a steady hand to hold everything in place for us. A fume extractor and a soldering iron. Now a soldering iron gets very very hot. Solder is a type of alloy that melts once the soldering iron touches the tip. This is a sponge which we use for cleaning the tip of the soldering iron. As you can see at the moment it is bone dry so the first thing I need to do is put some water on my sponge. Your sponge needs to be damp but not absolutely soaking. Once I've got some water on my sponge I'm now ready to solder. The protective equipment that I need for soldering is the fume extractor which needs to be turned on. You need to wear some goggles and you need to be mindful of the fact that the soldering iron can burn you. You should only touch the yellow part of the soldering iron. This part here is made of metal and conducts heat and gets very hot. If I touch it onto the sponge, you can see the steam that's generated. In order to solder your components in place properly, you are going to need to follow the diagram that you've been given as part of your booklet. This explains clearly where each component should be placed. Bear in mind that the view that you are looking at is the opposite side of the circuit to the one we've been seeing so far. So this is the track side, this is the side you need to look at when placing your components. So if we start with our R2 resistor, which is one kilo ohm, pay attention because the two different resistors have got different colour bands. So I need to locate the one that's got a red band as part of it. If I do that and I look at my diagram, we can see that there are two holes for the LED, so that must be those two holes there, and then there are two holes for the resistor. So I'm going to place my resistor by bending over the legs and putting them into the circuit board. At this point you want to try and push the legs down as far as they will possibly go so that your component sits nice and flat. I also tend to bend the legs over on the other side of the circuit to stop them from falling back down. At this point I'm going to clip it into our helping hand and I'm going to use the soldering iron to apply solder directly to those joints. To get a nice strong solder joint First things first, clean the tip, introduce the soldering iron next to the leg of the component and the track and then introduce your solder and as you can see the solder just gradually melts and forms a nice little peak mixture. If I do the other leg again, soldering iron next to the pad, melt the solder, take the soldering iron away, clean the tip, always place back into the stone. To check whether your joint has been made properly Take it out of the helping hand and have a closer look. So you should see that what looks like, almost like a little volcano around the bottom of each leg. If you can see a big clump of solder, then it's no good. And if you can see a hole running through the middle of it, you might not have a very secure connection. After you've soldered the legs of your components, you'll need to use a pair of side cutters to just go in to the top of the solder joint, squeeze and remove each leg. Be careful, sometimes these legs do ping up in your face, so make sure you're wearing goggles at this point. At this point, you're going to then go round and solder all of the components in place. Remember that resistors don't matter which way in they go, whereas your LED and your transistors must be located correctly, otherwise they will not function. To place a transistor, if we look at our circuit, we can see that the right-hand transistor has the little square tag pointing down towards the bottom edge of the circuit board. So if I show you our little transistor here and you can see here is that little square tab that I was talking about. So if I get my circuit board and I place it with the little square tab and we put it into those three holes. Now this time you probably won't be able to get the transistor completely flat against the circuit without damaging it. It is fine if that transistor sits above the circuit a little. 
At this point, I'm going to bend the legs out again to make sure it doesn't drop out. And I'm then going to solder each one of those three connections, being very careful not to get solder running between each of those joints. Where you can see gaps between the pads, those gaps must stay there, otherwise you will short circuit your component. So again, into the helping hand. As before, clean the soldering iron with a quick wipe. Get your solder and then just work around placing the soldering iron against each leg on the pad, making sure you've got a nice secure connection. As you do each joint, move around to the next one and repeat. And as I said, make sure that you're not putting too much solder on so that it doesn't flow between each one of those legs. Once completed, clean off the tip of the soldering iron, place it back into the standard. If I lift this up, and you should be able to see, as I said, that none of those joints are joined together. There is a gap between each one. And as with the previous component, get your side cutters. As I mentioned before, sometimes they shoot off, so make sure you're wearing goggles. Now we're going to place our LED into the circuit. As you can see, the LED has a long leg and a short leg. From the PowerPoint, you should already realise that the short leg is the negative side. If you look super carefully, you should also be able to see that around the bottom edge of the LED, just above the short leg, just here, it's almost as if someone sliced off a piece of the plastic, almost like a flat tyre on a car. If I hold it end on, you may be able to see it a little better. So to make sure that the LED sits at the right height, we need to space it from our circuit. In order to do that, we're going to use a little piece of art straw and we're just going to cut it so that it is 10 millimeters in length. To do that, just use a pair of scissors and cut. Once we've cut our art straw to the correct length, we then need to use it as a spacer with our LED. So all we're going to do is get our art straw, push the legs of the LED into the straw, pick up our circuit and then we need to install the LED. Remember it needs to be the correct way round or it will not work. So the short leg goes into the bottom hole of the two. Once it's been placed into the circuit, turn it over and as before we're just going to bend the legs and then solder carefully into place. Mm -hmm.